This is Cheryl Todd of Gun Freedom Radio. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd, reminding you that we and the show you are listening to are proud members of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Find out more and check out all of the other great shows and content at selfdefenseradio.net. Welcome to Unload and Show Clear, the podcast about all things IDPA. And now, here's your host, living proof that without practice, there's no limit to how little you can accomplish, Lloyd Bailey. Welcome to another episode of Unload and Show Clear, where we counter the media's negative image of gun culture by introducing you to the amazing men and women who are involved in IDPA, International Defensive Pistol Association. We're focusing on people, not politics. The everyday people from all walks of life, men and women who volunteer their time and effort, who spend their hard-earned dollars on travel, match fees, and gear to make this sport great. They're your doctors. They clean your teeth. They're fixing your houses, taking care of your pets. They fix your computers and pilot your planes, and they protect our streets and our nation. They are gun culture at its finest, and it's misunderstood or completely unknown to the mainstream media. Today, I'm going to introduce you to another one of these awesome people. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor. I'm really excited and honored to be able to say that today's show is brought to you by The Blue Bullets. Why am I so excited? Well, for one, The Blue Bullets make cost-effective quality bullets specifically designed for competitive shooters. Two, they're big supporters of the shooting sports because they're competitive shooters themselves. And three, because I'm a customer and I believe in their products. Using their own polymer-based liquid coating that they mix in-house, Blue Bullets are designed to prevent barrel leading, to reduce smoke, and yet they're priced comparably to other uncoated lead bullets. And unlike uncoated lead bullets, the Blue Bullets are Glock safe. How did they do that? They did that by spending six years developing a coating and a process that ensures consistency and quality. I can tell you from from my own experience that while I usually don't perform very well at matches, the Blue Bullets never let me down. Visit thebluebullets.com today. Tell them you heard about it on Unload and Show Clear by using this promo code BBUSC at checkout, and you will save 5% off of your order. The Blue Bullets, family owned and operated by competitors who know what you want in competition bullets. Check them out at thebluebullets.com. Our special guest today is Joel Rader from Augusta, Kansas. Our first, uh, the very first person from Kansas. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me on. So tell everybody a little about yourself. What do you do for a living there in Augusta? Well, I uh been for about oh, about 16 years I've been a airplane mechanic, structures mechanic, uh look on small business jets to big airplanes. Uh, I'm currently over at uh, Learjet right now. Oh, wow. Um uh, yeah. Very cool. Uh, so how did you get um how did you get involved in uh uh in working on airplanes? Where where did the interest in that come from? Well, uh, starting in school, I was in high school, I was into welding and shop and just building stuff with my hands. And um, they had a, um, oh, it was kind of bringing people into like a job recruitment center for sheet metal uh, mechanics. And so um, I just applied and uh, got hired at, uh, I believe it was Cessna at the time. Oh, and um, I was out there for, oh, I think about seven years and then. Uh, got laid off and went to another place. And so just kind of been around in Wichita as far as aircraft goes. There's just so many uh, places here in town as far as airplanes go. But, uh, gotcha. Yeah, that's how I kind of got into it. Okay. So it's sort of a um, a hub for for jobs in the industry. Yeah, there's just, uh, there's um, I, don't, I don't know how many major manufacturers of airplanes, uh, factories there are in here, but then there's just thousands of uh Little shops that supply vendors, um, you know, machine shops. Uh, it's kind of the air capital of the world, I guess. Very um, cool. And uh, yeah, I did not know that. So, where did the where did the interest in in guns come from? How did you get introduced to them? Was it something that was it as a kid, or did you pick it up as an adult? Well, um, you know, as a my dad, he had a I think it was just a 
cheap Walmart shotgun and uh, had a uh, lever action Marlin. And um, he never was a big hunter. I never was a big hunter or anything, but uh, he'd take us out and we'd go, you know, shooting shooting cans or, uh, you know, plinking targets and stuff like that. Um, but as far as the shooting goes, uh, I didn't start, I think it was 2000. 12 around there a good buddy of mine um uh invited me out to uh go shoot some pistols and uh anyway his dad had this uh kind of a rare uh unique uh, i think it was a magnum research uh oh 10 inch barrel 30-06 grease load pistol uh, this thing is just a fire breather well anyway, he said, Here, try this thing out. So I shot that thing and you know, man, that kind of uh kind of started uh I got bit by the bug there and we shot a few more pistols that uh, afternoon and then uh shortly after that I bought my first pistol and um just began to go into the gun range and that and took a real fascination to it. And, and like I said, I think it was about two thousand twelve. The thirty out six pistol didn't turn you off of pistol shooting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 matter of fact, uh, uh, Dean Gotzi's name of a good buddy's uh, dad and uh, dad Gotzi, uh, um They he had uh, he was always a reloader and he shot long range all the time and he had a lot of these unique pistols that were oh uh, just break over I guess single shot shoot rifle calibers. Oh wow! Uh, out of these things, yeah. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> He let me try a few of those, you know, and I said, man, that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, but, uh, yeah, hey, hand ached a little bit after that, but other <laughs> than that, it was, uh, I think, uh, you know, shooting nine millimeter 45 kind of really wasn't the same after that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get the big stuff out of the way first. Well, what was, what was the first, uh, handgun that you went out and bought for yourself? Well, I went and, and I really wasn't sure on a caliber. Uh, I didn't really have any thought consideration about it if I would have done it again it probably been a nine millimeter but uh i shot 45 it was a springfield xdm the 525 and i really liked the feel of that gun and uh that and um so i you know 45 it was a little more pricey and uh that kind of became well well maybe i better get a nine millimeter so i bought a uh i think it was a glock 17 mm -hmm. and then uh shortly after that i said man i gotta have a AR and an AK, so I went and bought those, and then <laughs> then the gun frenzy buying um, just started there. So I was grabbing up kind of pretty much about whatever pistol gun I could. I thought it was pretty interesting to shoot. Neat. Where did the yeah. where did your interest in competitive shooting come from? Where you started shooting handguns with that thirty out six break action in two thousand twelve? Where how did you get from there to Hey, come out and shoot a competitive uh, action pistol match. So um, I started having guys uh, that I'd meet the buddies that would meet at the range, and some were um, some were instructors, some you know were law enforcement and that. And so I had about ten acres, and so I just built a uh, berm out in the back and just kind of invited whoever over to shoot guns, or um, I would just shoot. Well, I. Um, you know, started shooting a lot. So I was like, I need a lot more ammo. So I thought, well, maybe I better get into reloading. And, uh, you know, so anyway, a, a good friend of mine named Ryan Burke, he owns uh, Finley Hobbies there in Wichita. He, uh, uh, has a RC, uh, no remote control airplanes and cars, but he sells, uh, bullets, powders, primers. And he, he kind of supplies all the, the competition shooting guys there in Wichita. And, um, they somebody gave me his name and so i went over to buy some reloading supplies and he goes uh hey man you ever think about shooting a competition and i said well what kind is that and he said so they had a uh friday night um a uspsa match mm -hmm. and so i showed up and i, I think i i guess showed up with that xdm and then um started shooting those every friday night at a match and then um anyway i ended up just uh somebody i think threw me an open gun and uh, i started shooting open gun and i ended up with a um no uh, open gun but sjc uh built open gun and uh so i shot open for oh man i think maybe maybe a year year and a half and then somebody introduced me to idpa and i started shooting it with a glock 
And then I uh, eventually just went over to the steel frame guns and shooting uh, 1911s and that. And um, and that's kind of how that happened, getting over into IDPA. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember of uh, of your introduction to IDPA? What was where was it? What was it like? What do you remember about that uh, that first match? Oh, so I uh, well, I, I think I showed up with my USPSA rig, my open gun, and <laughs> and everything else, and so I, you know, I shot just just as fast as I could, and and I think I shot no shoots, everything else. I dropped <laughs> mags on the floor with bullets in them, and uh, I thought I did great, but uh, you know they scored it, and uh, yeah, I didn't do so great. So uh, <laughs> I uh, that was kind of pretty much my first match, but I was just just amped up excited because I, I well this is kind of cool um uh, but i did like the accuracy being the accuracy part of it mm-hmm. and eventually um once i kind of slowed down i my accuracy and then my speed kind of came up and uh i got a idpa legal gun and um i think i was um oh i think i eventually went over to an esp start now mm-hmm. and uh i was running a caspian frame uh, 1911 um and then i got a i think an sti trojan and i was running those both nine millimeter um for oh i think it was to 2014 somewhere around there before i shot my first big match um okay and then up until up until that time it was i was shooting maybe two two matches a week uh here in town right what was that yeah. first? Uh, what was that first sanction match that you went to, and what do you remember about it? Oh wow, man that that was uh, <laughs> that was a learning experience. I stunk it up pretty good. Um, I had um, I shot. It was down in uh, oh, uh, down by Tulsa, Oil Capital, Rod okay. and Gun Club. Okay, and uh, I went I went down there, and um, Jack down there puts his matches on. It was uh, it was Badland, uh, mm-hmm. 2014, I think it was, and. Uh, I uh, got confused on uh, tactical sequence, tactical priority, uh, shoot no shoots, and uh, all that. And I was trying to uh, count on my fingers and toes how many bullets I had in the gun and all that. And uh, it was kind of difficult. But uh, anyway, I ended up, I think I came in dead last um, oh, in that. And, and uh, I thought, you know, this is, uh, I like this, but uh, I'm going to give it uh, about two years. And so I didn't shoot any other uh, big sanction matches for two years. I just began to shoot um, just as many local matches as I could uh, during the week or the month. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come to the sport and they don't have any competitive shooting experience. So they're learning the rules from the standpoint of never having shot competition. You came at it from you had been shooting open and USPSA and you were trying to adapt your understanding of the USPSA rules to IDPA. You came at it from the other direction. So what did that, what did you do during that two years? How did you, how did you get better? You're now an expert in a number of of divisions. What did, what was, uh, aside from shooting just your, your local IDPA matches, what did you do to try to get better as an IDPA shooter? Well, one, I was, uh, I was bouncing around, uh, different divisions like ESP, um, um, and I guess shot a little bit of CCP. Um, and so anyway, it was just, I, I originally started off well. I, I said, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on shooting CDP. Um, and, uh, anyway, so I had a, um, a guy, uh, here in town, uh, built me a, a custom gun. And I decided I wanted to stay with that. And so what I did was um, I just began to work on stance, uh, grip, um, started doing some dry firing um, and really working, uh, shooting a gun that that, that was a good way for me. Um, I had a lot of different people that, that would tell me things or I would see other shooters and do stuff, but some of it wouldn't work for me. Um, uh, I just kind of had to just come up with my own, uh, way of, uh, of shooting. And, um, uh, anyway, I went to a few, few different classes of people, um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, uh, 
that were IDPA, and and I learned a lot. So I I took a little bit from here or there, and then okay, this works. I'm comfortable with that. Uh, and then I just began to, once I kind of got my grooves there, I just began to just kind of hone it and tighten things up and, uh, what worked really for me. So where were you classification wise after that two year period? And when you decided, okay, I'm ready to, to go back and, and shoot the sanction matches again, um, uh, where were you in terms of classification and what was that first match that when you came back? Um, so it was, uh, it was a sharpshooter in CDP, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe it was 2018. It was a Texas State IDPA Championships. Um, okay. And uh, anywhere, um, um, that was my first big match, uh, kind of after my debacle down in uh, <laughs> Tulsa there. And uh, anyway, uh, but uh, um, there's just a lot of just great shooters in Oklahoma, Texas, uh, all around down there. And, uh, anyway, but I'd shot enough, uh, kind of smaller local matches with, with great guys and great competition that, uh, I was ready for that. And mm -hmm. anyway, I ended up, uh, one, but I didn't get a match bump at that match. Um, and then I shot, uh, I think it was two more major match, big matches. Uh, after that, mm -hmm. and ended up ended up in top three, um, but there was still not a match. I ended up, um, I think I shot a classifier and ended up uh, getting uh, the expert. Um, ended up in expert division. Okay, so that Texas State in 2018, that was in Wichita Falls, right? Yes. Okay, at the Double Tap Ranch. What do you remember about that day? That being, you know, taking a couple of years off away from IDPA or away from the, the big matches and trying to prepare yourself. What was, what do you remember of that day and your performance and, and the match itself? Give us a little, a little history, a little story from that day. Well, I, it, it was fairly warm down there. It was pretty hot. Um, one of the things I remember, it was just trying to settle down. Uh, I was, I get pretty anxious. Uh, and, the bigger matches in the first couple stages. <laughs> I was just trying to settle myself down, and I, I shot the first couple stages pretty good. And I, okay, and so I just kind of got in my grooves there, and um, had a couple stages that you know, dropped a bunch of points. And I thought, yeah, okay, I just need to kind of pull it in mentally, and uh, just began to do it stage by stage. But I believe the last three stages was pretty close, um, and the last three stages I just needed to have really good shooting stages and not drop a bunch of points and then was able to do that and then um ended up able to um just uh, place real good there yeah that uh the the picture of uh you on your idpa profile is re is receiving your 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 plaque from that match and i wanted to ask you as you mentioned it a moment ago but i wanted to to get a little more into this your your profile says i'm from augusta kansas i shoot cdp and you've got this picture of a really cool looking custom 1911. Tell us about that gun and, um, and what you love about CDP. Well, I, I tell you, uh, as far as the gun goes, uh, there was a, a gunsmith here in, uh, oh, in Ark city, Kansas. His name is Greg Copeland. Uh, he, he passed away. Oh, maybe three or four months ago, mm. but oh, Greg, he was a, he was a great, great guy. Um, and he just he just had a uh, a knack, and he was just a real artist with 1911s, and um, uh, he just loved them. Um, and this gun, I, I went to him, and I didn't really know what I wanted. I had around a few things, but uh, he did a few other things that I didn't really request, and he just kind of threw it in for free and. Um, you know, this guy, he, uh, was just meticulous in it. And, um, you know, I, I was planning on the gun being taken anywhere from six months to a year. Didn't really wasn't sure when I get it back, but, uh, you know, I just threw him a fat stack of cash and, uh, <laughs> about a month later I had a gun. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, uh, so that, that, that Texas match there, um, the week before that match, I had just picked that gun up and I thought, well, I don't know if I ought to 
use this or not. <laughs> and I thought, well, so I just burned about 500 rounds through it and uh, no hiccups. I thought, All right, great. Well, we'll just go ahead and shoot it. And uh, anyway, so it was a custom, uh, it was a race ready, casting race ready uh, frame and slide and um, all the goodies on the inside of it. Uh, man, just the gun just felt great. And, uh, um, you know, I call it Charlene. Um, <laughs> that was after my, I, I named it after my mama. She passed away back in 2017. So mm. anyway, uh, me and mom always go to the matches. So, <laughs> <laughs> so are, yeah. I guess you're glad that you didn't take the, uh, the, uh, XD to the, uh, to the match instead. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I, I I tell you, I uh uh as far I just uh like I said, I shot quite a few different uh, uh polymer guns and and in steel frame guns, and uh, I just the nineteen eleven and uh, just the feel of it, the weight, uh, just balance uh, and that, and um, I just like uh, CDP, um, just just the way the gun runs. Um, uh, I, I guess uh, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of feels like sometimes it's like driving a tractor. You know, it's uh, just <laughs> slow and steady, right. shooting in big old bullets. <laughs> what was the uh, what was the last match? The ma- last major match that you went to? Well, the last major match I went to was uh, down. I think it was Mission One Hundred and Sixty uh, guys down yep. there in. Uh, I, I can't can't remember. Which part of Texas? I, White right. I that's my that's my home range. Yeah. Oh, hey, awesome. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that was a great, uh, great bunch of guys down there. Yep. Um, great match. Um, uh, lots of hardcover, complicated. It, it was uh, it was a you know, a great match. Um, really enjoyed. I didn't plan on being uh, um, oh. I, I being a little warm as it was uh, <laughs> down there, and so I, I didn't really have enough bananas and uh, you know water I drank the night before. But uh, it, it was just a fun match. It was a great match. Uh, that was the the last major match I was going to shoot, and I was going to shoot uh, also Colorado this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I had kind of felt um, oh I just kind of had some medical issues or some just some things was. Uh, that it happened to me over uh, there, and uh, anyway, um, make a long story short, I wasn't able to make uh, the Colorado State Championships this year, but uh, I did shoot it last year, and it was a just great match out there. Great match. That's one I've been wanting to get to. That uh, Walt Prue uh, apparently puts on a great match out there, and and it's a from everything I've seen is a fantastic facility. So maybe next year. So, oh yeah, it was great match, great match. Uh, just well run, professional. I I tell you what, it just beautiful scenery. Yep. Yeah, and you've you've you're an expert in ESP, CDP, CCP. I think an SSP. Is that correct? Yeah. So, if you couldn't shoot CDP, which uh, which division would you choose? And uh, if you could, if you had to shoot, pick one division and shoot it for the entire year. But it wasn't CDP. Which one would you choose? Oh, I probably probably CCP. Uh, uh, that just round count would probably be the same. Probably stage planning probably be, be pretty much close to CCP, but uh, <laughs> right, right? Y- you know, so uh, that would probably be the easy one. But to, I, I I love shooting uh, ESP though. Um, so I you know I I probably yeah uh, I kind of. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like the ESP guns a little bit better. I like the ESP Caspian gun. I got it. It shoots nice. So I'd probably shoot that. <laughs> <laughs> now, of the divisions that you haven't tried your hand in, carry optics, bug, revolver, PCC, which of those is appealing to you if you if you had to choose one of those to shoot? I would say I would like revolver. I think revolver, I always thought revolvers were pretty cool. Uh, I, but as far as uh, if I was going to shoot another guy, probably, probably carry optics, um, just from shooting open for a little while, um, and, and a dot, um, you know, you know, you said you took those two years off and you, you worked on your IDPA game before coming back to, to shoot a major match. 
What, what do you think was the biggest thing that you learned during that time off and during that practice, those two years of practice? What was the biggest lesson that you learned that helped you um, when you got back to shooting sanction matches again? Well, I would say I would say probably it was just patience because um, uh, as a shooting uh, shooting um, sometimes in a match for me I, I would really kind of get ahead of stuff uh, in my head or mind and uh, so I just kind of took that time to just kind of slow myself down and once I was able to do that I, I just disciplined on on um, little bitty things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that kind of, all those little things adding up kind of started, uh, when I kind of was able to get things put together, um, and correct mistakes that, that just, I was lingering doing all the time. Then I started getting better match performances and, and was kind of able to get up there and, in the overall match with some of the, the uh, more experienced, better shooters. At this point, what would you say is... The strongest part of your game. What it, what are you the most comfortable with? Or and and also, what is it you see at this point that you still need to work on the most? What is your what's your weak point and the weak point in your game? I would say, as far as uh, foot speed and transitions and that, I, I'm a little bit bigger guy. I mean, I move a little bit better on my feet. Um, and some of that stuff I've kind of tried to work on through, you know, working out in the gym and, and that, but, uh, kind of a weak point or where I've tried to really work on is, is really transitions from steel poppers to drop turners to, you know, swinging targets. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if there's, uh, multiple, uh, steel targets and just transitioning to those mm -hmm. and then, ending up, you know, uh, and not chugging along to get the slide lock or forgetting how many bullets I got in the gun. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That's always fun. That brings up a question that I like to, uh, I started doing a little segment called pick your poison where I would ask, uh, kind of either or questions, uh, about your approach to different things. And, um, that your response there made me think of one of them and we saw it. I don't know whether you saw the video that I did from the, the fall brawl, um, was two weeks ago where, um, my teammate kind of demonstrated this thing I called the hold my beer stage. And basically, and you, I'm sure you've seen it, oh, I, yeah. right? Uh -huh. <laughs> where you come to that point of cover and you have a steel activator to shoot and that activates a disappearing target or really, you know, a, 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 uh, whether it's a drop turn or a, an up down or a, a clamshell or something, something that you, you got to wait on for it to present. But at the same time, after you shoot the steel, you could come over here and shoot paper, right? There's there are paper targets available mm -hmm. to you. Are you the kind of person that waits for the, that, that will kind of play it safe and wait for that disappearing target? Or will you take a chance and shoot paper and then come back? Well, six months ago, I probably sounded play it safe. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, now, I don't know. I just uh, kind of trying to improve. I'm probably going to go for it. Um, but, uh, you know, that just kind of uh, maybe in transition to that or whatever, if I don't see a squirrel or something. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, get confused. Uh, maybe that might change, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I would say probably now, and sure, I'd probably go for it. You've shot USPSA. You've shot IDPA. You took you took two years off away from sanction matches to hone your game and and to focus on getting better in IDPA specifically, what is it about IDPA that makes you devote the kind of time to get better at it? What is it you love about the sport compared to others? Cause you could be, you could spend all your time shooting, you know, USPSA or steel challenge or any number of other things. What is it that's special about IDPA for you? Well, I, you know, I, uh, I mean, you got good people at, all kinds of matches and different kinds of pistols. Uh, I, I like the group of people that, uh, I shoot with, you know, at the local range and then, 
um, even some more of the other people I'm meeting at the bigger matches. Um, I, I really, as far as IDPA, I, I like um, just, uh, you know, I shoot eight rounds in a mag and um, I don't have to I do do mag changes, but I have to do a whole, a whole lot of reloading. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's one of the things as far as, uh, shooting open guys, I got tired of reloading, reloading mags, <laughs> um, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, all jokes aside, uh, I, I, I like it for the accuracy, um, accuracy, um, some of the times that, uh, and when I shoot uh, the other, you shoot USPSA, I'll shoot single stack too, most of the time, but, um, I you know I I just like uh, just not having to run a whole lot. Um, <laughs> really, just to be honest, <laughs> it is easier um, as you get older. <laughs> you know, um, and uh, it, 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 the accuracy of it. Um, you know, I don't have to sprint very fast, and you know that 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 kind of helps. I kind of enjoy that. <laughs> Well, Joel, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I really do appreciate you coming and, and representing Kansas. And um, I hate I didn't get to see you at Mission 160 last year. I hope I, I, I get to see you at, uh, at, a, at a match down the road. If you head down to Texas for a match uh, at Mission 160, I'll, I'll make sure to look you up. Yeah, that was great. Well, I, I appreciate it. And I just, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, I, uh, thanks for what you do uh, for the sport with this this program and, and having me on. I, I greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell you what, I just, just want to thank God uh, for all that he's given me uh, on your program there and what he's he allowed me to do in this sport and that. And um, it's just good Lord willing, we'll be shooting some big matches next year. So I just appreciate it. You know, you're, you're what you're giving the sport. So thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, look forward to seeing you at a match, man. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank our guests for coming on the show and our sponsors for making all of this possible. Take a moment, if you would, to check out the website, check out our show notes at unloadpodcast.com. We've got lots of interviews with more amazing guests like the one you heard today. Join our Facebook group at unloadpodcast.com slash Facebook for all the latest updates and to connect with other fans of the show. And if you'd like to support the show, we sure would appreciate it. Consider becoming a patron at unloadpodcast.com slash extra. I've got some full-length interviews and special content available there exclusively for patrons as well. And if you know somebody or you yourself would make an interesting guest for a future episode of Unload and Show Clear, please contact me at lloyd at unloadpodcast.com or click on the contact page on the website and send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Tune in again next time for another episode of Unload and Show Clear. Unload.